Hey folks, it's Marvin Cash, the host of the Articulate Fly, and we're back with another Texas Hill Country Fishing Report with Greg Wielander of Upstream on the Fly. How you doing, Greg? Well, hi Marvin. I'm I'm doing awesome. You know, it's it's exciting to see uh, fall, fall like temperatures arrive here in Central Texas. A month early. A, a month early, and you know, our last report we were talking about 100 degrees. You know, w- when's this going to stop? Um, it stopped. It stopped probably about two weeks ago. So. The calendar shows autumn arriving this week, and, and the weather's been spot on. Um, we're, we're finally starting to transition into fall fishing season. And, um, you know, daily highs have been in the 80s, overnight lows. Out in the hill country, they've even touched in the 50s with uh, most places in the 60s, which is, which is significant. You know, it's starting to change that water temperature, and that's what we want. We want the fish to realize the seasons are changing. Um, and they'll start eating. Yeah, before they hunker down. That's right. <laughs> we don't want it to go cold too fast. Um, otherwise, they'll uh, their metabolism will slow down and they'll be hanging out. So uh, we're going to try to cap onto the uh, make take advantage of of the uh, dropping water temperatures and the cooler weather because the fish realize it's time to start eating. You know, um, you know. This week we're having some uh, some rain coming from the uh, tropical depression or tropical storm beta. You know, um, been an extremely active um, tropical storm hurricanes down in the Gulf this this year. Um, to where we've you know the hurricane, I guess the National Hurricane Center had run out of names, and now they're starting to use letters from the Greek alphabet. So. What we're hitting this week is is beta, and um, it's bringing us some rain, but it's not not flooding rain as of yet. So, um, yeah, I was going to say the last time that that happened that they had to use the Greek alphabet was the year of Katrina. Yes, that's right. I that's a good point. You know, so I know the tropical hurricane season goes into October. So um, let's let's hope we uh, put a brakes on it. So uh, for both red fishing at the coast and uh, getting washed out here in central Texas, you know, um, it was, I think, two years ago, 2018 is when the uh, we had record floods on the Lano, and that was in October. So we don't want any of that happening this year. Um, so let's hope not. So I'm going to talk about the lower Colorado, east of Austin. We're going to talk about the Lano today. and. Talk about Lake Travis, you know, and the Highland Lakes in general. So um, the Loco, just just east of Austin, has, over the last two weeks, has been perfect as regards to flows. Um, However, that that could change with this week's rains. Um, I was noticing that Longhorn Dam was actually open today, and it has not been for the last two weeks. And when I say open, it hasn't been running the volume of water that, that we've seen all summer. So the water flows have been ideal. Water clarity has been has been solid. It's been very good. Um, so we'll have to see how the rain plays out this week. But um, one thing to bring up is the, uh, the wind direction. You know, it's been two weeks now. We've had a wind out of the north and the northeast, and that that affects the largemouth bass fishing. Um, it doesn't. Put it 100% off at this time of year, but it, it doesn't it doesn't do it in as far as uh, what I want to see. I want to see a southeast breeze. Um, the Guadalupe bass, how, on the other hand, would um, they don't seem to care. They don't seem to care about the wind direction as much as the largemouth. So that'll um, hopefully that'll change. Hopefully we'll get some southeast breeze and um, the largemouth bass fishing will will start for sure. Um, and the Lano River, it you know, last time we spoke, it was getting slow. It was getting low. However, it's it's recovered. You know, um, we've had several rain events that has put that river at running about 90 to 100 cfs all the way from Mason into the town of of Lano. So 100 cfs at this time of year on the Lano is ideal, and uh, fishing's been good. The Guadalupe bass fishing has been good out on the Lano, and uh, if you get a cloudy day, it's even been better. And let's go up on the Lake Travis. 
So um, the fishing, the fish have started moving in shallow from their summertime patterns, which typically is, you know, they're holding in deeper water in the summer. So we're finding fish up on the main lake points as, as well as some of the secondary points. Um, but it's been a short lived thing. You know, it's, it's a few hours in the morning. You know, if we get a cloudy day, it helps, but it's not quite there yet for, um, the successful days that I do see on Travis in the fall. It's, but it's getting close. You know, they're starting to transition up shallower because what's going to happen is they'll start chasing shad and they'll get them shad back into the, uh, into the creeks and the, sh- and the coves as we get into October. Um, so that's something to look forward to. But the water temperature is still in the low 80s. So um, we need a little bit cooler cooler water temperature. So tips and techniques. Yeah, I was going to say, so, you know, that we've got the, we see what's going on. So what are our tips and techniques? Well, so over on the lower Colorado River, um, it's been primarily streamer fishing. Um, anything, you know, it, it, right now it's still kind of shad bait fish, so they're not picky, you know, anything like a big deceiver, chartreuse and white, gray and white, um, you know, big size two clouds or minnows. Um, crayfish is one of my favorite patterns as we get into fall. We're just a little early for a solid crayfish bite. Um, we'll have a topwater bite before we really start throwing crayfish, but, um, but they'll eat some crayfish this time of year, um, some brown and orange, black and orange. Um, I, I typically do black and orange if low light, you know, maybe off color water or a cloudy day. Otherwise, I'll, I'll brighten it up a little bit with, with more of a brown orange. Um, and, you know, typically size four. So, for example, a near enough crayfish uh, size four. Um, but the top water, been a little bit of action on a slider kind of like a Dahlberg slider or maybe a Murdich minnow. Um, but, I, but I like the Murdich minnows on an intermediate line this time of year because it it brings them down about a foot or, or so in the water column. So uh, kind of acts as a, uh, as a dying bait fish, more so than a, you know, a frog or something. But October is, is my favorite month coming up, and that's, that's an awesome topwater month on the lower Colorado. Um, it's where you can fish top water all day long. So I'm excited about that. We're getting close. A couple weeks off, at least for the month of cal- calendar wise. Um, but the Lano River, streamers, predominantly streamers. Uh, nothing's really changed from my last report. It's, uh, you know, white bay fish patterns. Um, you know, Matt Bennett here in, in Austin, I, I like his lunch monies and his, and his smaller fly called the brunch money. Um, in, in tans and whites, um, and clouds are, clouds are variants, uh, chartreuse and white are, or all white seems to be working the best. And for top water, you know, can't go wrong with the yellow boogle bug. Um, the lano bugs, of course, still works. They'll work all the way through October. Um, and if you've got a cloudy day, it'll even extend your top water bite. A little bit more so than, you know, say the first couple hours of daylight. Um, but with the north wind, um, for, for all the fisheries, but they've been holding a little bit tighter to cover. So keep that in mind. You've got to get that cast right in there tight. You know, the, the north wind does mess with their heads. It, it, it puts them off a little bit. So um, get them tight to cover. And like Travis, shad patterns, chartreuse and white. Olive and white are kind of my top choices. Um, as we get into October, I'll start doing some crayfish patterns. Um, and I'm still using an intermediate line. So, um, you know, a shad pattern, you, you can't go wrong with, with, with Blaine Chocolate's micro game changer. And, uh, that's just a, an extremely fishy fly. I, I really enjoy fishing that fly, um, up on Travis. And, uh, on a side note, let's talk about the way I fish the, a, a game changer or really any, um, any streamer where I need to get down. Okay. So you want to use a, uh, a sinking line, but you want to go with a shorter leader. You know, don't be putting on a eight or nine foot leader on a sinking line, no matter if it's an intermediate line or, or a full sink. Go with a three foot leader. Um, I'm using like a zero to one X, which is equivalent to 13, 11 pound test breaking strength. Um, 
and your shorter leaders allow your fly to, to get, to get, you know, get down in that strike zone. It keeps it the same sink rate as your, uh, your sinking line. Um, and I prefer fluorocarbon, you know, because it will get down faster than mono or your nylon leaders. So keep that in mind. Um, if you're up on the lake and concentrate your efforts around the main lake points right now, um, it'll, it'll be another couple weeks before we start getting them back in the coves. And top water will, will turn on too. But right now, top water's not really been my number one go to. Um, you can pick up a few fish at, at low light, either first thing in the morning or, or towards the end of the day. But, um, there you have it, Marvin. That's fall fishing season started here in the Texas Hill Country. Well, that sounds great. And, you know, folks, we love questions at the Articulate Fly. If you send us a question, you can email them to us or send them to us on our Facebook or Instagram or our Twitter page. If we use your question, I'll send you some articulate fly swag and you'll get it into a drawing for something at the end of the season uh, from Greg, from all the great brands that he reps. And uh, before I let you hop, Greg, why don't you let folks know where they can find you so they can book you and take advantage of this great fall fishing in the hill country? Yes. Well, my website, upstreamonthefly.com, and then over on social media, both Instagram and Facebook, and I'm under Upstream on the Fly. Well, listen, folks, take advantage of this cooling weather to get out there and catch a few. Tight lines, everybody. Tight lines, Greg. Tight line, Marvin. <laughs>